Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today we're talking about starting your Slaves to Darkness army. Now, this is an interesting army. This is an interesting jumping-off point for Chaos in general. You can sort of start in Slaves to Darkness and then go to any of the four Chaos Gods as well and use this sort of as the, the primer for those other armies. And on its own... It's a really diverse, flexible army that gives you a lot of options. You know, you have some speed, you have some hard-hitting units, you have some anvils, uh, some monsters, some elite stuff. It's really a nice variety, and um, I think the army in general is really strong and seems to be pretty popular. Um, you know, and the Chaos Warrior sculpts, of course, are just iconic to Warhammer. So, starting off your Slaves to Darkness army, this is really more about list building and uh, what direction you're going to take your army in. Uh, as far as which Chaos God you're going to devote yourself to, if you're just starting out with Slaves to Darkness, I would say don't pick a God right away. Um, unless you are, you know, an experienced player and you know what direction you want to go in. Um, I've done a series of videos on the different things that are specific to the different Chaos Gods, um, so go check those videos out on my channel, and while you're hanging out around doing stuff on the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're enjoying what you're seeing. So, um, also, a lot of people tend to paint their army in a scheme along with one of the Chaos Gods. So if you're a new player to Age of Sigmar in general and you're picking up Slaves to Darkness, I would recommend playing it uh, without really painting the models for a little while to kind of get a feel of what god direction you want to go in. Or just go with a paint scheme that you like or that is fairly neutral to the different Chaos Gods. Um... You know, it, it's kind of weird to see, you know, a bunch of green corn units uh, hanging around. So um, just bear that in mind. Uh, it's one of those weird aesthetic things <laughs> that is, it's not that important, but it's you know, something a little bit to think about. As far as gameplay, you know, Nurgle is going to tend to be a really grindy sort of army. Their abilities kick back mortal wounds and boost your saves and um, generally make you more defensive. Um, so they can really take, you know, getting a good slog with your opponent, take a bruising and, uh, you know, dish back uh, some decent additional mortal wounds through various abilities. Corn is your really strong offensive uh, chaos god. He is, you know, very much just about hitting, like, a hammer. Slanesh, also very offensive, but is a little bit more of a glass cannon style. A lot of their buffs come after you use, you lose models from a unit. So, uh, the playstyle is definitely a bit different there. Uh, Korn and Slanesh, both offensively oriented, though, and it's kind of hard to say which one is better for offense. They're two different styles of offense, so... Um, that really is sort of season to taste on those. Zinch is your god that is oriented towards magic. So Zinch can get some bonuses to casting and uh, you know, give spells to units and has some additional defense both against magic and uh, some bonuses to their regular saves through rerolls. So Zinch is another one that's kind of defensive, but it's a different brand of defense than Nurgle and also has the offensive side, which is magic oriented. Uh, your other choice here is which damned legion you're going to be from. Uh, Ravagers is basically built around marauders and cultists, making those uh, units better. Cabalists is very much about magic and buffing your magic game. Uh, so if you want to build a list that is heavily oriented around wizards, cabalists is where you want to go. Uh, Despoilers uh, gives you buffed up demon princes and a bigger aura of chaos. 
uh, which is your main allegiance ability. Um, so you get 18 inches off of your general, giving that uh, your units uh, with the same god mark a bonus. And then Host of the Everchosen, that's really all about Archeon and the Varen Guard. Um, if you're running Host of the Everchosen and you're not running Archeon and Varen Guard, I'm not sure what you're doing. That that's really what the host of the ever chosen is designed for. Uh, and speaking of interesting design, um, it should be noted that you don't have to devote your whole army to one chaos god. You can mix and match if you choose, so that's definitely a possibility. I would say, in particular, a demon prince is something that might be off uh, of your chaos god for the rest of the army. Uh, both Corn and Zinch offer some really interesting possibilities with the Demon Prince. Um, and then for your Chaos War Shrine, um, that uh, doesn't necessarily matter what mark the War Shrine has. It's about what mark it's giving buffs to. So that uh, is a nice versatile piece. And we'll talk more about that later. So for our basic battle line units, the stuff that you got to bring to the fight. Chaos Warriors. These are a great anvil unit. They're not really powerful on offense, but if you arm them with hand weapon and shield, and there's more than 10 models in the army, or I'm sorry, in the unit, they get a, uh, a reroll on their save, and they start off with a four up save. So they are really strong on defense when they're in larger numbers. They don't have a lot of offensive punch, which is okay because you have plenty of other units to do that. They're really playing that anvil role quite strongly. They also have an additional save, a five up against mortal wounds. And that can be very valuable to have around. Uh, Chaos Knights are our next choice. They are basically chaos warriors on horses they have uh the same uh ability to shrug off mortal wounds on a five up they these guys are much more punchy though and a little bit less on defense but they're still rocking a four up save and three wounds per model so their defense is certainly not bad and one of the benefits here is that they are definitely fast they move 10 inches so that's going to be a fast hammer unit to get around the board Hit your opponent where you need to and grab objectives. Chaos Marauders. These are probably one of the best units for its cost in the game right now. They are very fast. They're hard hitting. They're not overly strong on defense. They have a five up save, but uh, there's various ways in the army to make that better. Um, they basically always make their charges. Uh, it's you, know, they, you roll 2d6 to charge and their lowest die becomes a six. So they're and they're plus one on the charge. So you can make 11 inch charges all day. Um, our next one, chaos chariots. These are interesting because they're fast. Um, their stats are not super exciting, but they have a large base size and they take up a lot of space. So they're an interesting piece. You can take them in units of three and a unit of three chariots is going to take up a huge area. So you can really kind of get them in there and zone out areas of the board. Uh, so they're an interesting piece. Personally, not one of my favorites, but... I definitely can see where people would use these. And I believe they have a 12-inch move, so that is very valuable. Speaking of 12-inch moves, Chaos Marauder Horsemen. These guys are all about the speed. They're great for grabbing objectives. They're fantastic at screening and chaffing. That's what they do all day long. They are really not that exciting on offense. They have a 5-up save on defense. Again, you can buff that so that the you know your defense is better. There's some offensive buffs as well, but most of the time they're not doing anything terribly exciting on offense. Uh, 
they're a really great unit to get out there, grab objectives, get in the way. And they have the, the ability to retreat from combat and then charge again in the same turn. So that can really be good for repositioning, getting them out of the way, um, getting them onto an objective. There's lots of little things that you can do with an ability like that. It's very strong. Uh, Skaven have that ability, and it is always uh, a, a very good use. Uh, Varengard, these guys are a conditional battle line. They're only battle line and host of the Ever Chosen. In general, Varengard are not very good value overall. Um, but in the host of the Ever Chosen, with all of the buffs and such that you can give to them, they can become fairly good, uh, especially in combination with Archeon. So, um, they're you're really like they're the majority of your army when you're running host of the ever chosen it's like archeon and three units of varen guard and like a wizard and that's about all you've got um so that's it for battle line we have six different options and really like personally i can see a mix of chaos warriors chaos knights chaos marauders and chaos marauder horsemen uh, in a lot of armies, just mixing those up, finding the right ratios, uh, finding the right mix for which god mark you're going with, what strategy you're going with. Um, I like all of those a lot. Chaos Chariots, I can see where people would find a place for them. And Varengard are just totally rule of cool. They're beautiful models. I wish all of the Chaos Knights looked like them. Um, but uh, alas, they do not. Um... But they are, they're a fun option. If you want to go in the direction of Varengard and Archeon, have at it. So, we are lousy with heroes in Slaves to Darkness. So I just wanted to go over the ones that are particularly notable that uh, you're going to see in a lot of lists and are going to be most valuable to you. The other ones aren't necessarily bad. I just don't really find that u much use for them myself. Um, there certainly are potential things in there that could be other hidden gems that I'm not, uh, listing out here. Uh, one of our strongest options is the Chaos Lord on Demonic Mount or Chaos Lord on Karkadrak. Uh, either one is really good. Um, there's a difference of 60 points between the two. Personally, I think the extra, uh, the extra stats you get on the Lord on Karkadrak versus the Demonic Mount is worth more than the 60-point difference. The Lord on Karkadrak is just... He's a beast on his own. Um, otherwise, their rules text is almost identical. They have a, a command ability that buffs your Chaos Knights and Chariots, Gives them plus one to hit and lets them reroll charges until the next hero phase. Super good. Um, you see a lot of these guys kicking around armies. If there are Chaos Knights, there is going to be a mounted Chaos Lord not far behind them. The Chaos Sorcerer Lord, this guy has some great utility. Um, he has a fantastic spell and a fantastic ability. So his spell goes off on a seven lets uh the unit that it targets re-roll all hits and wounds that is an incredibly powerful spell and then his ability oracular visions picks a unit wholly within 10 inches and lets it re-roll saves until your next hero phase which is a massive bonus to get without rolling dice or spending command points um you know you spend a command point on a generic command ability to get reroll ones to save. This guy is just handing it out for free. Uh, your Chaos Lord, he has a command ability that lets a nearby unit pile in and attack a second time in the combat phase. That is definitely really strong, particularly with like Chaos Marauders and Chaos Knights that are your really punchy guys. Uh, Bellacor, he's your unique demon prince. He has a fantastic ability uh, that basically is going to shut off one of your enemy units for a turn. 
Um, I cannot explain how strong that is. It, it just kind of points to somebody and it says no. And the you have to pick the unit at the start of the game. But that ability still can be used at any time, even if Bellacore dies. It's a once per game thing. It is so strong. I just go read that war scroll for all the detail on it. Not to mention that he is also pretty good in combat and he is, um, you know, fairly strong defensively. He's a four up ethereal save. So definitely really good there. All right. Next is your generic demon prince, which gives you a variety of different buffs. He is the centerpiece of your Despoilers army if you go in that direction. He's good on offense. He's good on defense. He heals. He has various different command abilities that are, some of which are very strong. Um, he is a great piece to have. He's versatile. He can fly. Um, just a, a great piece in the army. Uh, the Gaunt Summoner, uh, he is the double caster in the army, and he can summon demons, which is very powerful. It's a once-per-game summoning of a unit of demons, uh, but it can be any of Pink Horrors, uh, Plague Bearers, uh, what else do we have? Demonettes or Bloodletters. So, a little bit of extra summoning. And a great spell to thin out hordes. And he, again, he's a double caster. He's the only double caster in the army. So, uh, other than Archeon. Uh, so he's really valuable to have. Uh, last one here is the Chaos Sorcerer Lord on Manticore. He has that same Oracular Visions ability that your Chaos Sorcerer Lord has. Uh, except it's flying around on a flying monster. So you have another source of reroll saves. Um, his spell is really great. It's a, a horde thinning spell. Uh, he's a very mobile wizard, so uh, and he's decent on defense, so he can actually survive even though he's kind of getting into combat. Definitely uh, an interesting choice, interesting piece. You know, when hordes become a thing in any particular meta, a spell like his is really something that you want to uh, same thing with the Gaunt Summoner. So, all really good choices for heroes. Those are really the main things that I would think of, want to be picking up early uh, in my collecting of Slaves to Darkness. A couple of other noteworthy units. Um, the Chaos War Shrine. This is like an auto-take in most Slaves to Darkness armies. It is really good. It's a versatile buff piece. It gives a six-up ward save to units around it uh, within an 18-inch bubble off of a fairly large base. So it's really giving a lot of protection there. It has fantastic uh, prayers to hand out to uh, your units, uh, including rerolling saves, rerolling hit and wound, rerolling charges being immune to battle shock, uh, all depending on uh, what chaos god uh, the unit is devoted to, but um, you know some of the basic abilities that just work on anything, you know, it, which includes rerolling hits and wounds, uh, that's really good. Um, our other two units, these are the two cultist units that I think are really worthwhile. Your iron golems, they're seventy points for. 10 wounds on a 4 plus rerolling save. They're really not impressive on offense, but that is um, a heck of a little anvil unit. It, you know, very inexpensive. You can run them up, hold objectives, uh, chaff your opponent up, and really hold them there for a while with that 4 up rerollable save. Um, and then your untasted beasts, they get a pregame move. They get to move up five inches at the start of the game. That is a really powerful ability in general. Uh, particularly, 
you know, when you're trying to zone out enemy deep striking and teleports and things like that, um, that can be very powerful. So it's certainly something to consider for your army as well. And those guys are all both great in Warcry. So I want to talk a minute about Archeon and the Varengard because I really haven't talked much about them yet. Um, and I'm not going to go into detail really on them. What you need to know as a new player is I don't really recommend starting here. If you're a new player to Age of Sigmar, buying Archeon and a bunch of Varengard, I think, is a bad place to start. It's a really cool army to put on the board. I'm unsure about what the quality is like. Um, I haven't really seen many results of people running Host of the Everchosen. Really, these are units that you have to build around. If you're going to take Archeon, you're usually going to take Varengard. If you're taking Varengard, you definitely want to take Archeon. And then you're going to be wanna, wanna be in Host of the Everchosen and use all of those associated abilities. Um... The models here are really expensive. Each box of Varengard, I believe, is $100, and then Archeon is like $180, I think. So it's a pretty expensive army to collect when you're going in that direction. Um, they're beautiful models. They're great models. Archeon is definitely something that you can pick up later on. Um, a lot of people love him. He's probably better in other armies. Like, he's fantastic in Slaanesh. Um, uh, but other armies, he's not necessarily as powerful. But he's an interesting piece. He's 800 points, so you basically have to build an army that is revolving around him. So that's all I really have to say on that. You know, be careful if you're a new player. Uh, that is an alluring route to go down, but not a necessary one, and possibly a dubious one for new players. So things that are absolute traps. Uh, Chaos Chosen. These are just so terrible. I don't know if they need more attacks, or they need a better save, or they need more wounds, or all of the above. The models are really expensive. They're cool looking, but they're old sculpts, so they're all going to be either metal or fine cast, which sucks on both counts. Um, so the models are a pain in the ass. They can be hard to find. Um, and in general, they're just bad value. They're 140 points for five, and they are simply not worth 140 points. It, just for comparison, five Blight Kings are 140 points and they will like toe to toe with chaos chosen beat the tar out of the chosen every single time most of your cultist units that's all of the war cry war bands are really not that good they're cheap some of them have some kind of cute abilities but they're really not that great. You also cannot give them god marks, which is kind of a problem uh, since so many of your allegiance abilities revolve around god marks. So they're a challenge. Um, Iron Golems and Untamed Beasts, I think, are both very good um, and definitely do have a place. Um, but uh, the rest of them, just not quite cut in the mustard chariots both the uh, regular horse-drawn chariot as well as the gorbeast chariot i think they're just they're not the value is just not there and the power is not there they're not as good as other things on defense or on offense the thing they really have is speed but at the same sort of speed, you can get Marauder Horsemen instead, which are generally better um, and a lot cheaper. So that's where I'm at with that. I think the Chariots are really just not that good. Uh, Varengard, as I've mentioned a few times now, unless you're building around Host of the Everchosen with Archeon leading the force of a bunch of Varengard, um, I don't think they're really 
what you're looking for. They they look cool, they seem cool, but they are outrageously overpriced for what they do when they are not in the host of the Ever Chosen. So just a sample buy list for you now. Um, if you're getting started into a Slaves to Darkness army and you want to get your 2,000 points uh, in one fell swoop here, definitely pick up that Start Collecting box. It has some Chaos Warriors, some Chaos Knights, and a Chaos Lord on Karkadrak. The Lord on Karkadrak is fantastic. Um, knights and Warriors are just absolute staples in the army. Definitely pick up a Chaos War Shrine. It's a great utility piece, great support piece. Uh, and it can actually kind of hang in combat too, which is odd, but it certainly is worth noting. Um, a Chaos Sorcerer Lord. I believe this is like the last hero that's still only 15 bucks. So go snap him up before GW jacks up the prices. And he is absolutely fantastic. Uh, he has a great spell, great ability. Maybe even get more than one of these guys. I'm considering getting a second one. Um, a Demon Prince is a great choice as well. He has some versatility to him. Um, as well as being, you know, that centerpiece of a Despoilers army. I'd pick up another box of Chaos Knights. Um, those come in a box of 10. So, you know, you'll end up between that and your start collecting box. You will have 15 Chaos Knights, which is, you know, quite a few. Um, that's a lot of Chaos Knights. So uh, it's definitely going to be a good backbone to your army. It's a really good, strong hammer. Um, a box of Chaos Warriors, uh, they come in 16 for some odd reason, but, uh, you know, another box of Chaos Warriors, adding that onto the ones you get in the start collecting box gives you, a, you know, quite a nice group of Chaos Warriors to work with, and mixing the new sculpts with the old sculpts actually can look pretty good. I'd pick up two boxes of Chaos Marauders. Uh, that gives you a little bit of flexibility. You, there's 20 in a box. Their maximum unit size is 40. Minimum unit size is 20. So you can run two 20s or 140. Um, either way, uh, both pretty valuable. Great unit. Uh, definitely want to pick that up. And I would also pick up a box of Chaos Marauder Horsemen. Um, it comes with 10 of them, and their min unit size is 5. So... Um, it's a really good value of a box, and it's a really great utility unit. So overall, this will give you a little bit over 2,000 points and give you a nice, flexible army, good, well-rounded force to start off with. You can make some fun lists with this. You can play around with various different aspects of the army. Definitely cool. I dig it. Um, this is, uh, kind of how I'm starting on my army, actually. This is very similar to what my current collection looks like. Um, so that is about it for now. Feel free to drop any questions or comments down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you are so inclined, we do have a Patreon linked in the description below. So thank you all for watching. I'll see you all later.